Hello and welcome to a cultural journey like no other here on the Serenity Resource Connector, brought to you in partnership with the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. I'm Winsome, your host for this program, and we've got a special treat for you. Two incredible guests, each representing a different generation, one with decades of wisdom and experience, and the other a young visionary, ready to share their unique perspective on Jamaica's cultural evolution. So get ready to be inspired, educated, and possibly entertained. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether you are with us live or you're watching the replay. Be sure to share the link and invite others to come along this journey with us as we bridge the gap between wisdom, experience, and youth. And to get that going, let's make welcome, no stranger to this space, Nancy McLean, JCDC Commissioner, Chair for the Culinary Arts Committee. Welcome back, Lady McLean. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. Awesome. And for those who missed that episode where we talked everything food, you want to go back and take a look at that? <laughs> where Commissioner McQueen shared in her element. All right, but for this episode, they are going to be focusing on their lived experiences. Not expertise, but experience. All right, and to round off, we have with us Ron Walters representing Garvey Masio High School, past student. Welcome, Ron. It's great Hello. to have you. Hello, good night. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. And for those who are tuning in, let us know whether you are representing the Garvey Masio family or you're with Team JCDC or where exactly you're joining us from. Are you a member of a culture club? If yes, let us know which of them and we will be happy to engage with you. We keep it interactive in this space so you put it in the comment where you're connecting from and we will acknowledge you accordingly. So. Let's get started. Lady McLean, share with us your most memorable cultural experience in relation to Jamaica, of course. <laughs> you know, um, you asked a question, and I know I was on a forum where I, I expressed a, a particular um, experience, which is uh, absolutely um, divine. However, I'm hoping that I can put that same experience that I had shared then in its right context when we, as we go along. However, my, one of my greatest moments, really, because those of uh, who know, persons who know me, both family and friends, and even with JCDC, I have a long history with festival, a long history with the king and queen competition, a long history with building costumes. And um, I guess one of my memorable um, nights is when I won the, well, I won, in one year, I won the king competition. The first king competition, it was called Healer's Dream. And that's a, that I can tell that story, you know? And my model then was Western Horton. That costume, really, I sat with Kapo and did a lot of research when you're talking about culture. And he spoke and he told us all about Bedwardism, revivalism. So when that costume was built, it had a bit of a, what we call a kitchen bitch on it and everything. It had the dog that is represented in, in that revivalism and everything. And he actually taught us how to do that rap oh. and he may soul rest in peace he lent us his shepherd's rock <laughs> and he, he he actually said i never put this in the hand of anyone but today i'm going to lend it to you for that performance and the performance with that the arena those days when you say costume king and queen the arena is bursting at the seams you don't have enough space in which to put persons, right? And that was an, another costume, the costume queen, no, that I won. But the model was Kathy 
leave it. Yeah, and it was called Jamaican Sunburst. When you look at the average Jamaican with smiling, happy, that's Jamaica that I, I am from and I know, and the music that we always had. Well, today we still call each other, oh, listen to that happy music. Yes. It's a retro, but we call it happy music, you know? So when you say Jamaican sunburst, and then she was just, she was Miss Jamaica after the year of raining. And when she modeled that costume and the colors of that costume, it was indeed a Jamaican sunburst when oh. that costume came on stage. Absolutely fantastic. So those are some of my most memorable and there are others too <laughs> <laughs> i would imagine so and for those who are with us from the beginning we did say we're going to give you wisdom and experience yes. and we are going to be giving you a little youth flavor so ron in the time that you've been with us here on this earth <laughs> what's your most memorable cultural experience so in the short time I am here on this earth, I must say my most memorable experience is very recent. I um, just actually joined the JCDC this year and it has been a tremendous um, year. Um, my memorable moment will have to be participating in the JCDC Festival of the Performing Arts. Um, we enter dance, music, um speech and the drama we excelled in dance speech and the drama i tell you that garvey masaya high school took down over 20 awards from the national um finals and that was just a great feeling to know that you're a part of a group of young people who are doing so exceptionally well um the fact that we went through so much, we cried at rehearsal, we went home late at night, basically risk our life, and then all of that sacrifice turned out well. It's just a great feeling. When I reflect back on myself being on that grand stage at the Little Theatre, the lights shining down on us, and then we can say, yes, we are now in a great place after all that hard work. That had to be my most memorable experience. Awesome. And the cool bands are in the house. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you, you, you have your supporters here with you, cheering you on as you share. It's yes, great to yes, see yes. this kind of commentary in this space. Keep it coming. Right. All right. So Rowan is on dorm. So let's meet him for a little while. <laughs> All right. So how can we talk about cultural heritage jamaica's cultural heritage without talking about music that's just a rich part of our heritage and so commissioner you know we can't go through all of them in the short time that we have here but tell us um how the music traditional jamaican music genres have evolved based on what i've seen over the years let's get to mental and i can tell you what i do in my own when i was at the pegasus I made sure that I engaged a mental band every Sunday morning, basically almost every other Sunday morning, let's put it that way, for brunch. Because, you know, I believe in our culture and we cannot lose it. And when you talk about brunch is a family occasion. When you take the family to, to, to brunch, parents can sit there and explain the rumba box, what, what that man is playing, why is he playing it, why the sound. And so that is a lesson in itself while they're sitting down there with the rest of the family. You know, so the tradition must carry on. And that's when I build costumes, when I go out and I and I still decorate sometimes, I try to, to incorporate a little bit of our culture. Persons who are going away for um, I remember one year, uh, I think it was a it was a Mr. Major, and then he had um, a costume. What did I do? I used the bandana, but it was a very tedious thing, and I used the sequins, and you know the plaid and how the bandanas, and I did everything sequined because 
I love the glitter and I love the shine. And it, 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 the contrast of it brought out a beautiful Jamaican costume. And there's so, I doesn't just for the costume aspect of things. He, Ron was talking about dance and all the traditional, the commoners, you know, the dinky mini, you know, and you can see me move on my shoulder like I know how to do it. I don't want to know how to do the first <laughs> step, but still. <laughs> Ron can show us. <laughs> but, but, but when it comes to dance, scat, but our music, of course, the mentor, that foundation, the father of music. And what came out of it? The scat? May soul rest in peace again. Baron Lee took the scat. Okay. You know? To this day, it's um, on the floor, when it gets into the oldies, you can still see folks doing the scat. Oh, because yes. those, those music, traditional, will never die. And we must really put in it put it in its right place. We really need to let the youngsters know where we are coming from, why our music is so great, why reggae is so great, why the dance all know is so great because of the foundation and everything. When you have a solid foundation that is laid, you cannot go wrong. But what we are, some of us were slipping on, we're not passing the right traditions on to the youngsters. They need to know about that, the foundation. All right. And we're going to talk some more on that later on. Okay. Right. <laughs> but Ron, share your favorite contemporary Jamaican musicians and the impact of genres like dancehall and reggaeton on what's going on now with the younger folks. Go ahead, share your favorite contemporary Jamaican musicians. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to add to something that Miss McLean said. I was in a dance um class here at college, and the dance doctor himself actually mentioned what she said. She, he was saying that many of the dances that we see nowadays came from the original kumina and skia and dinky, even the dirt bunks, it's a form of kumina. And we're trying to say that I did not know that. Why not teach us the the um, the roots and then teach us what's happening now so we can know where these things are actually coming from. So that was a really good point that she uh, made right there. Awesome. So, all right. So my favorite Jamaican musicians. First, let me say I, I, I'm not really into dancehall or reggae. I am a firm believer in Christ. I follow gospel music a lot. I look up to the Levi's heritage. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of oh, yes. this. Yes, oh, yeah. but they are former members of the JCDC as well. Are they still a part of the JCDC? I really look up to them because um, there are young, there are groups, sorry, of young um, people sharing the gospel in a fun and entertaining way while praising the Lord. And it's really a hard thing to do as youngsters to serve God and evangelize. So I really look up to them for that. And the fact that they're coming out of JCDC, which is my my safe place right now, it's um, really a good thing. Really a good thing. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, we do know that because um, they carry a rich... I think it's a mix of the whole um, Kumina and all good those vibe. revival and a good diverse mix that they bring energy to yeah. the space. I'm glad how you spin that, Ron, because it is yeah. presumed that because you are representing the younger generation, then you'd be into reggae and all of those. So I love that. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. All right, let's let's get your people in the house. They're cheering you on to remind you that they are here in the virtual space. So don't get nervous. <laughs> are you doing well? Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so we are going to talk another rich part of Jamaican heritage: food. And this is your section, Lady McLean, food and the culinary traditions. All right, so we're going to start with you, Lady McLean, talking about some of the traditional Jamaican dishes you grew up on and how the recipes have changed. 
Wait, you tell the man that you're just hitting the nail on the head now. No, let us get into this. Now, for all our listeners, viewers, where are they? It's going to be a mouth watering exercise. Let us go back to my mother. That's the foundation, my mother. Because when my mother affectionately, let me have so listen, affectionately called mama, when she laid that table and she prepared a meal, let me be honest with you. All you want to do is wait for the next the, 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 the next day can't come fast enough from breakfast. And let's go into the traditions then. We all know about our akia and sauces. No Jamaican home is without that akia and salt. But we're coming from the days when salt fish was not the price it was today. Salt right. fish, when you cook akia and salt fish, you saw the salt fish. You understand? <laughs> and then, of course, you know, that they started, you could use the red herring with the, with the, the aki, you know, and so on. But th that is one heavy and our johnny cakes and how you made it there's a thing that a lot of folks do in the country it's called corn that's a traditional part of breakfast you know it's it's like made like the johnny cake but it has corn meal in it flat okay. crispy and when you have that with your pear your ackee and salt fish a good cup of our traditional jamaican cocoa tea cocoa tea you know then you're gone to bed <laughs> then you can't look. you see every day was a different um day like you know there was a special we know that saturdays were soup those days i grew up on saturday there's no two ways about it soup that i would know exactly would go with my mother and i know exactly how to purchase like if it's beef soup the soup bone you know the good one and what have you and all what good. But there's a particular soup that I'm seeing shifting away, and that's the good old pepper pot. Yes. You can see, you, you, everywhere sells red pea soup, chicken soup. The even one place I went and I, and I was in, I got nothing, got um, skulking cow skin soup. <laughs> it was delicious. The per, I guess. Why I loved it so much through the person said, yes, when I have it, it's good for your knees. But it was oh. great. I went back the second time, the third time. I'm sorry, ma'am. Our, our um, pressure cooker is not working. I went back the fourth time, but still can't get it. But anyway, so be it. That is, yeah. But the pepper pot, our red pea soup, we grew up on that. Then other days now, you had the um, stew peas. Every house would have them stew peas and rice with all various things in it. You, you know what I said, all various things in it? Because I don't want it. Some people don't like that. <laughs> you know. And of course. All various things, yes. Yes, yes. The fricassee chicken. You can say brown mm. soup chicken. You see, they're brown soup. But a real good fricassee chicken. And you also had it curry chicken and then so a lot of folks like like the bony part of it let's go back to another thing that i don't see at all macaroni done with salt fish oh, macaroni yes. with salt fish was a lovely meal yes but let's go to the sweet part though you see the traditional our good old potato pudding Ella bottom, Ella top, Ella bottom, and hallelujah in the middle. In the end, baby. Mm -hmm. That is what we grew up on. On a Sunday evening, my mother would say, Okay, I did a little total. But she did a the, the, the potato pudding, the cornmeal pudding, and another thing that was a stable thing in her house a punch, a punch, the egg punch, eggnog, stout making it early Sunday morning, not necessarily for Christmas, early Sunday morning, the family would have that. But what we have lost and we're losing, and talking this way, because I do go out and I lecture and I tell folks about that, we're losing that family unit where we dine together. 
not eating, I said dining, where we dine together, even once a month, we should do that. Whereby we socialize with the family, we interact, and the food even tastes better when you're having it. Not Don't not. rule out, sorry, oxtail. Oxtail has a history. You see the price of oxtail now? If, if the uh, person's even older than myself, who studied in England, and when they went to oxtail, they could just go and get the oxtail because oxtail wasn't sold for this premium price that it was sold for. It is being sold now for. It is, it is premium price. But oxtail and beans, everybody could afford that once upon a time. But it's now become a premium, premium. Then another thing that would was then tradition, tripe and beans. You understand? And these are household stuff that you would, traditional stuff that you would get. And the, 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 the thing goes on, liver and bananas for, for breakfast. And I mean, there's, there's nice, lovely steamed color look. You cannot go wrong where that is concerned. Um, but we have a rich history of, those are, I call traditional food, not food that we have now fused. So let's keep it traditional. International right? cuisine. Cuisine, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, all right. Oh, I saw some expressions there as if you were connected Hello. with some of those. Yes. Uh, Somebody's saying something. Ron, are you with us? Yeah. Hello, I wasn't hearing a while ago. Okay, are you with us now? Yes, I'm hearing now, yeah. Right. I saw your expressions while Lady McLean was sharing and you were like you were connected with some of those yes. dishes. Which of the traditional dishes were you connecting on that you can remember grandma used to make? All right. So I, when she said, when she used the term, hella top, hella butter, man. Uh, <laughs> yes, that one, that one took me because I've heard that term being used before. But then since I am here um, studying, I've seen where these traditions are changing, like, taking a major toll because when we make um by the way i am studying chef the patisserie which is a pastry chef course when we okay. make pastries we don't make pastries the traditional way anymore we mm -hmm. use confectionery ovens and big industrial ovens no one really use these traditional ways any longer and to be honest i do think doing it the, the traditional way somehow puts a type of flavor in it that we're not getting when we are using these artificial ovens so that one took a toll took a toll on me and i want to um highlight the schools that um actually um put out these dishes on jamaica day and heritage week and so on because really and truly if it wasn't for these schools doing that many youths nowadays wouldn't know what our culture actually tastes like because the homes are so changing now where these dishes aren't being prepared again. We are now turning to different cuisines, different um, region, Chinese and all of that. So really and truly our culture, our cuisine is not being highlighted as it used to be um, back then. All right, so we are passing the baton on to you. Um, so even though you're learning these new ways in school that you're going to keep the traditions alive as you go out there and pass it on to the next generation because that's how we're going to preserve it right yes, right. Have to do that. but may i say something here right no yes don't don't forget the tile leafing i thought i didn't want to but that well there's something you just said to me yes mention about the tile leaf tile leaf and we all know it's also called blue draws right blue draws, so, yes yeah so but look here what he's saying is so true you know because all the convection ovens and so forth. Now, how would you do a tile, you know? Because that has to be done really, definitely, from the, 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 the cold pot or the in the earth, you know what I mean, and so on. Yes. But so a lot is being missed. Even if it's being missed, do you realize that in the, the professional kitchens of the respective hotels, 
when they're going to do certain things, especially if they have a very um, big function and they're going to have um, stations, let's say one is Jamaican, they do prepare the traditional stuff in the authentic way to put out, you know, because that is the only way that you're going to get that taste. Unique taste. Yeah. yeah. The jerk, with the jerk. They all have jerk pans on the outside too, but they do. But we, ha I, 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 I agree, Rowan, if you can do it from where you are, we really need youngsters. I know culinary arts, we reach out in all the competitions that we're doing around the island, but we still need to see more coming forward and doing the things because there are categories in the handbook that one can enter. And that is how the tradition, we were talking about tradition and culture, that's how we're going to All right. Let's bring in our live audience. All right. So Kimberly McLean is saying that Jamaican traditional cuisine have certainly shifted and have incorporated other countries' cuisines. And that's not what the tourists want when they come here. They want to taste the real Jamaican. And when our people in the diaspora come home, they want the real deal. Yes, definitely, mouth water and discussion for real. Because when Lady Mac was sharing earlier, I don't know if you saw my face. <laughs> but really exciting. All right. Cultural celebrations and festivals. We are partnering with JCDC for Culture Corner, so we cannot forget to share about cultural celebrations and festivals here on Culture Corner. So, Commissioner, share one memory of a traditional Jamaican celebration festival that you um, that stands out in your mind. That would be your top memory. Or two men. The, two. The, <laughs> there was a time that there would be no year that would go by without me uh, organizing a, a, a festival, an expo. Food festivals, yes. Because I really believe that the only way you can, not the only way, one of the ways, important ways you can learn about food not only Jamaica here, but the rest of the world, Scotland is doing the festivals. So what I, I would do, I have had a Jamaican festival whereby I showcase the respective parishes all around. I've had a done the, the Caribbean food festival where I've invited the chefs from all the respective um countries, Trinidad, Ghana, uh, you know, where I know the food, the cuisine is really strong and brought the chefs to Jamaica. I've had festivals, Italian, Indian, Asian. I've put on all those festivals because it's when you, you come to experience the, the, the multiplicity of tastes that you're going to um, engage in, it, you're learning as well. Because I don't just do make sure that they're presenting dishes. Why the dishes are being presented? What is it made up of? What does it mean to that particular country? What does it mean to me to a particular parish here? You know, because we all know that Portland and the jerk. Because if I'm going to do a, a, a Jamaican food festival, there are certain things, middle quarters, Portland, the jerk with this shrimp. And there are various things that you must incorporate. And you have to incorporate the fish and all of that, where the escovige and all that sort of stuff is. But food festivals are very, very important. I know it's heritage. We're heralding heritage coming in um, this a few weeks' time. But I know that we ought to see some real Jamaican heritage in terms of festival, in terms of our cuisine, in terms of what we're all about, you know? Yes. And so festivals mean a lot to me. And I, 
I, I leave this country many times just to go and visit various food festivals around the world. German cuisine, because I part of my part of my studies was in Germany. So when it comes on to the Oktoberfest and that so on the sausages and all and the we go there, see a lot of chicken and so forth. We have a mini Oktoberfest here in Jamaica every year as well. And that's also a festival, you know. But they and then we have German town here in, in, in Jamaica. So we must know how we can pull everything together and incorporate. Yeah. But yes. we're not doing a lot of festivals right now, but we ought to go back and embark on that. Right. Kimberly's reflecting that um, food festivals at the Pegasus Hotel yearly was the best, showcasing various countries, cuisines, and culture. Yes. So that's the truth. Tim is good. Yes. <laughs> we have reminisced and those awesome. Let's get to Rowan's perspective. What has been your experience with modern Jamaican events? All right. So modern Jamaican events, as I hear Miss McLean speaks, I was like, uh, I want all these things to come back to like mm -hmm. just reenact because now all we are seeing is basically um, parties and all of those things that is not actually highlighting what Jamaica is really, to be honest. Um, my experiences, though, I love what JCDC do in terms of enhance the um the our our Jamaican cuisine. There's also a festival that happens every October. I'm not sure if it's the same thing Miss McLean was saying. It's called Team Jamaica. Oh, Taste of Jamaica. Sorry, and yes, Taste of Jamaica. I am really, really interested in that i've heard multiple things about it but never actually getting a chance to participate i'll be here where um trainees here at this college participate and win multiple awards it give um persons a chance to showcase their talent and compete and it also expose them give them opportunities where they can meet persons in high positions and all that and get even a job from being a part of that competition. So yes, it's really a good thing that JCDC is doing. And also the gospel song competition, the gospel star competition, all those things that they are doing. I really look forward for those um, festivals. Yeah. All right. So JCDC is carrying out its mandate, preserving yeah. the Absolutely. culture, right? All right. So now that we've mentioned all of that and you've alluded to it along the the journey in terms of cultural education and the passing down of traditions how can jamaican cultural knowledge um be passed down from the more experienced generation to the younger ones jcdc is already doing it but uh how else can we we continue to hand down there how did you let's put it this way lady mclean how did you um learn from your parents in terms of the passing on and then we do the same for ron how did well they... you know how did my my mom i was in the kitchen uh, beside her and uh whatever she was doing i i, I learned it there i had first of all my passion was there and you know you can make anyone learn um you learn you know it's how you impart, how you embrace them close to you to impart. And I, 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 I mentioned this, and I will say this is not, but it's to do with the costume. Um, there was one time I was invited to uh, some students to talk about wire bending. But when I got into the room, I know I, my post persona basically is that people say, teach, or uh, you're a nurse. Also, because I, that's what, yes. that's me. Yeah, that's just Nancy, if you know me. And so I needed to get there because I didn't look like a wire bender going into a, a classroom. So I said, I said, let me, let me get something straight here. You're all looking at me as if, how is on earth you ladies going to come here and tell us about wire bending? But when I started to talk, 
I mean, I told them all the experiences about building costumes and do, doing the frames, doing the headdresses and so forth. Then everybody wanted me now to come and do their project that they had to do. So what I'm saying is how you embrace people. You can't want somebody to learn something and you don't, you, you're not packaged what you want them to learn in a very kind and loving way. Uh -huh. Loving way. And I'm emphasizing certain certain things, you know, because some of it is, is slipping away slowly. And so even at the schools that are doing home economics, if the parents don't know how to prepare certain things, but they can get Mary and they can get Johnny with them in the kitchen and say, let's make our trial and error together. We will mess up the plate, but let's do trial and error of this. Because year before last, I think it's year before last, the JCDC cultural definition, we had put out um, a calendar and it, that calendar only had traditional recipes and how to do. Yes. So something like that is a keepsake. You make it, it's a catalog because the next one that will come out will definitely have different items, different dishes, different what have you. And so you have that and you say, okay, let us try this. Let us, it's trial and error, you know. Life is, the whole life is all about trial and error. But when the error is made, you must remember that you didn't put enough uh, flour in it. That's why it's soggy. Or you put too much flour in it. That's why it's so thick. As a, so that the next time you're going to prepare it, you know exactly what you're going to do. So it's holding the hands and I'm talking to also the, the teachers who do those subject matter and how they encourage their students and how to do these things. Community colleges, community centers, anybody at all. It's all about teaching, coaching. Ah, beautiful. Coaching. Well said, that love boy, I tell you. Yes, Ron, how about you? How, how did the handing on, passing on of a baton take place in terms of culture, heritage? Trust me, it is in a, actually a very weird way. You know, in Jamaica, when JP is the, decides to do its thing and there is no current, that's when <laughs> you around in a big circle and you hear them say, join the circle, story come to yes and that's when they tell us um about back then they teach us from the roots come up from coming out to revival to the stories the myths of jamaica them tell we um all the things about nine night and so on when people dead if they bring them out by the footwear cover your mirror all them things and we learn them in that dark circle and then we can't sleep for the rest of the night <laughs> all that things in our mind so yes that's how all that long time um heritage and culture was passed down in terms of cuisine i will learn that from my grandmother i don't think i think everybody everybody learn cooking from like everybody but most persons will learn um the culinary of jamaica from their grandparents um is that they will call if you come help them peel something or help them wash up and then you will see them doing and you will pull from it so this is how i actually um learned jamaica and heritage and culture from watching my grandparents cook to listening them stories and all of that also in basic school i don't know if basic school still do this but basic school will teach these things in a fun way where it will stick in um our heads i remember in basic school uh, my mother every year used to have to get bandana and all of that and they will practice us to sing these songs emmanuel road brook rock stone and all of that so <laughs> basic school days um they try to instill the jamaican culture into us and i really hope schools are doing that still because i still remember and it's a long time now yeah ah, yes the schools are still uh, maintaining that i've yes. had to do some of those projects and it, it helps to uh, even for us as parents to be yes. reminded mm -hmm. of the, the heritage the culture because they have to participate in these different activities with their young ones Definitely. but it's for those who never learn it you're gonna have to go learn it so you can help the children right <laughs> so, 
to the schools are still yes. um, still at it. And some yes. churches I know do um, get engaged in that and community yes. organizations. I don't know how your community, do, do you have those kind of uh, so, social gathering where they pass on the culture run? All right. So um, in terms of social gathering, the churches will have to um, do that. We have the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which actually plays a huge part in my community. You will have time of the year where all the branches in my region will come down and they will do big functions, especially in this season, Heroes um, season. They will come down and they will dress up like the heroes, talk about the heroes, and that's how we as youths get um, education. Um, yeah, that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one final one for this segment, Ron. We are so much into technology. All right. We have this program that years ago we would never even have imagined that we'd be able to. Uh, carry on this kind of discussion and in terms of passing on the information and the experiences through this channel, how can we continue to utilize the social media space technology in general mm -hmm. to maintain, to keep the culture alive? I mean, social media is basically everything right now. If you see a group of 10 youth, 9 out of 10 youth have a phone in their hand, have a tablet, even the little babies, they are literally more knowledgeable of gadgets more than more than us literally more knowledgeable so i mean um using platforms like youtube where youths are on like 24 7 we could put the culture in ads where as they watch a video the ads will pop up they will see something and learn something immediately the youtube influencers the youtubers can actually uh do more of those videos educating us youths rather than doing um things that will not benefit us so yeah the the, the influencers can actually play a huge part in this because youths actually tune in to them a lot more than even television like i have a tv in my room and it is not connected to local television it's either youtube or netflix so i mean the internet will definitely play a big part if the youtube influencers step up and if persons post more on social media platforms like TikTok and instagram all right can i throw out a challenge to you and others um instead of waiting on the influencers because there is a certain category of things that sells that persons are attracted to but what if those who are into the arts the culinary and all of that you decide to showcase in a creative way these different elements of your culture you think you can become a great influencer in definitely, your definitely very very good idea very good idea i think it's just it has to do with um commitment once us youths once we start something we expect it to just go off like that we don't want to um wait and go through the go through with it we want it to just happen it just has to do with commitment you have to just start and be perseverant and hope that things will work out that's cool. very good idea yeah all right so you, you can you can start because you have to be passionate about it that's why you stick to your niche because if it's something that you love like i i, I enjoy sharing and empowering others so True. The, t the time and i made that into a business <laughs> right so i can continue to do that i get getting paid to do what i enjoy doing and supporting others different entities like jcdc the police the municipal corporation and other entities i get to serve them in different ways while serving a wider cross section some of these people are like i've never ever met and will never meet in my lifetime so there you go <laughs> all right so others are doing it so let's let's join it all right so of course we have challenges but there are different initiatives that are ongoing that we are using to preserve the jamaican culture because we have a lot of infiltration of other cultures and interestingly there are other countries who are claiming some of our Jamaicanness and theirs, things that we might not even be proud to embrace as Jamaican. Others are claiming it and loving it. So 
So, what are some of the initiatives that you have seen, projects that you have seen, that um, aim to safeguard Jamaican cultural heritage? Dum -da -da -da, Lady McQueen. <laughs> What are some of the um the initiatives? In it, yeah, in it. Yeah. Well, um, put it this way: we have a lot of um groups you now popping up in Jamaica, and dynamic groups um, headed by young young Jamaicans, young Jamaicans who are great in their respective cultural discipline. And I think they're carrying that man to um, put it. Look, okay, let's let's take J, um, NDTC for instance. Let us take NDTC and look at the tradition. Look at the history of that tradition that J, um, NDTC has coming down, right? And yes, still when you, um, I remember someone said to me. I think they made they toured the U.S. recently. And they know they've seen NDTC out here. They've seen NDTC singers and so forth. And yet still, the individual said to me, wow, NDTC has some really young dancers that are excellent and so forth. So what it was just saying to me that they thought they were still going to see dancers of yesterday. No, you, you, you understand? And yeah. so succession planning, how you incorporate the younger ones into and carry it on seamless. It's about doing things seamless. And that's where they, they, our culture is concerned. You know, if we can do that and incorporate various things, whereas, uh, what should I say, disciplines, and make it move from there to there, seamless. That's how we do it. Oh, awesome. All right. Ron, what are some of the initiatives, programs that you've seen? All right. You're hearing? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. The Jamaica National Heritage Trust, the JNTH, I have recently heard about them doing an assignment. I researched and saw on the website. They work well in um, promoting and sustaining Jamaica um, cultural heritage site. They're actually doing a really great job also i think us as young um young persons in the industry can actually we are actually doing well in preserving for our upcoming um generation definitely when we gather to meet or gather to practice for a function the young persons who practice with us actually learn what we are doing and also when we go to perform persons see these performances and then it pass on, pass on through that way. Fantastic. And we have, we have, we can't leave out the JCBC competitions that goes year in, year out, because um, when I first got involved with the Festival Queen Committee and I was able to see some of these young ladies and the array of talents that they have performances yes. and those absolutely singing yes. and and um when they are they're sharing in terms of their knowledge of the culture and um, their representation of um their parishes knowing what it is that the, the parish is known for it helps to keep these alive i think that is very important and even when you go to, I think it's it's more pronounced when you go to the finals and on the night when you have different parishes represented, you can learn so much from just the um the different performance pieces. I've learned so much about different parishes just by that. So there's one avenue. And of course, as you shared in terms of the food, when you see the different elements where um, you're supposed to use cassava as the main ingredient or breadfruit, it actually helps to bring out different elements of the culture, it teaches you different things to and different ways you can utilize things that bread food back then people used to just throw them away. You now you have a bread food selling for 1,000 Jamaican dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the creative ways that you can actually utilize these ingredients, some things that you never thought much of growing up, 
how you can make them nutritious so you can add nutritional values to the meal that you present and the creative ways that you can present them as lady mclean said share it with love so the young ones would be attracted to it and they in turn would want to pass it on to their children and grandchildren so those are some Absolutely. of the areas that i've observed all right and kimberly's agreeing with ron earlier that the youngsters are gadget babies so <laughs> to our advantage to spread the jamaican cuisine and culture is really good Definitely. oh yes they know so much about those devices yes, yes. apart and just put them back together like that before you say hello <laughs> And they question things too. For those who are exposed, they have to question things too. So you have to be prepared and armed with the information to provide them with the guidance that they need or to usher them into the presence of wisdom and experience like Lady McLean. And so that's part of the reason why we're doing this cultural journey so that you can grab a little tidbit if you're not sure or somebody's asking something, just grab a little tidbit and share it with them and say, hey, Check out what Lady McLean had to say on this topic. Or Rowan has to share his perspective on this topic. And we're looking forward to um, the bright future ahead of, of your own. Because I hear a lot of enthusiasm and, and it was zeal to make a big Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so we're sharing you on. All right. So as we wrap this episode, let's hear your hopes for the future of Jamaican culture. Let's start with youth and then we close out with experience, Ron. <laughs> yes, so yeah. you want to hear? Your hopes for the future of Jamaican culture. My hope for, for um, Jamaican culture is just to, all right, so for me, culture has done so much where I have seen in my group or my club at school where the performing arts has took a toll on youths in a way where they take performance as a coping mechanism. Many youths nowadays turn to drugs or, or smoking, drinking drugs or different alternatives. But I've seen where my um, group members has used the performing arts to overcome stress to overcome challenges. I don't know how they do it. It's like they are using stress to overcome stress because trust me, the performing arts itself is also a heavy load upon us. So I've seen where culture is actually doing good for youths. And I just wish if more youth will see the positive side of culture and just take it up. That's my hope. I just want you to try. The Bible said, taste of the waters and come see the good work. So I want them to taste culture and actually come see how sweet culture can actually be. That's my hope for, yeah, Jamaica. Awesome. And you said something that's very, um, that's been very uh, clear from the different discussions that we've been having this year as we engage the different culture clubs, because what a number of the schools are doing that we have engaged is actually using the performing arts as a way of changing the trajectory for some of these students, especially those in what's considered volatile communities. And I, I and the children are just loving it. We had our youngest guests on last month's Culture Corner I believe they were about eight to nine years old and they uh -oh. stayed up because they wanted to share and they did their tribute to the great Miss Lou. And um, they were just so, and they said that it has helped to build their confidence. And we've been hearing that a lot from the schools. It helps them. And um, as you said, in terms of coping mechanism, what Definitely, they say yes. helps, helps them to tap into a side of them that helps them to um, perform better in other subject areas. So that's that's beautiful that you share that. All right, Lady Mac, come in with the wisdom and experience. What's your hope for the future of Jamaican culture? My hope for the future. I think um, already JCDC has a mandate and I must be honest that they are really living up thus far to their 
mandate. But to take it a little further, I hope that the churches, the community centers will play a major role in carrying and nurturing the culture of this country that is a brand name internationally. You just have to walk out and go to another country, say you're a Jamaican, where everybody I think wants their autograph. So we must preserve that culture, whatever discipline it is here, and we have to preserve it through the youngsters, all the very respective programs that one could get involved. And we must not only wait for the structure that, because JCDC is doing this or this other company is doing this. No, corporate, I wish to see corporate Jamaica embrace the upliftment of the culture in this country and be able to sponsor all the various events, cultural events that come to their table in order to maintain, preserve the traditions of this beautiful land we love. Well said, well said. All right. And this is Nevelyn's favorite episode so far. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, it should be. I mean, we wove a really beautiful tapestry from the, the wisdom and experience to the youth. X Factor, always great to have you and sh have you sharing loves the positivity about our culture. We need to continue push it on social media. Right. Right. Remember now, you know, YouTube has offered you the opportunity where these videos, even the one hour length, if there's a specific segment that you really connect with, just do a clip and share it. All right. Yeah, Ms. Wow. All right. We're learning something new about Lady <laughs> All right. So we know where to turn. All right. You see, you see, you see that, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> letting the cat out of the bag indeed Jomo. Yes. all right and let me thank chef on the school boy for subscribing and for those who are connected who have not yet subscribed to the channel this is one way of helping to promote the culture what we share here subscribe to the channel like comment and continue to share so others can learn about this rich culture and let me thank you all those who are live and will be watching the replay for taking this cultural journey with us we promised that it would have been really entertaining <laughs> all right and i think uh Lady mcqueen and ron did deliver on that informative entertaining and we want to continue to preserve our culture rich cultural heritage and you want to check out the jcdc social media sites or the list of activities for Heritage Month. A lot going on. Upper Clarendon will be having an event next week, Friday, uh, which is going to be Friday the 13th. An all day event up there celebrating. And I'm sure a number of communities will be having different activities. We have our Heroes Day celebrations in the parishes and kingston's gonna be having a host of events so you want to go check those out october 10th 11th 13 16 on heroes day we have a salute to our national heroes live tv broadcast at 8 a.m and then you have national honors and award ceremony live broadcast from king's house at 9 a.m and then the heroes day virtual concert featuring leroy siblis grams morgan Dwayne Stevenson and a host of other performers at 30 p.m. And of course, the parishes will be doing their parish um, awards and um, honoring the heroes. And I'm always excited to go out in Clarendon and see, be reminded of the different eras and what they represent and all the schools come in, Garvey Masio and the Denby and all those other schools come in and hold the, the 
different performances or the, the speech. You can hear the diction and the enunciations coming out as they share on their um, national era. So do go on out and support the local events. This is one way that we can learn more so that we can have more to share to enrich those to come. Thank you again, Lady McLean, Ron Walters, for sharing with us my two foodies in the space. I have a to the entire time, but it's okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. And this has been another episode of Culture Corner here on the Serenity Resource Connector, brought to you in partnership with the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. We do this every first Thursday. And you want to tune in? For those who are new to the family, we connect here 8 p.m. each Thursday, looking at a different area. Next week, Thursday, you don't want to miss community safety and security. We are going to be featuring our Lusco Top Cops from Area 3, and they have some really rich stories to share. So do tune in, subscribe, set your notification, and let's continue on this journey as we continue to inform, educate, and empower. God bless you and have a great night. Thank you.